How's it going, everyone? I want to go over uh, some unfortunate PlayStation news. Now, obviously, I saw the vitriol and the backlash a lot of you guys had uh, towards everything related to digital gaming media yesterday. I was honestly very, very surprised at just how upset people were. Now, I definitely understand the reasoning people should be upset, but I figured the fact that it was just like the WB Discovery content, that Discovery content that was just these various shows that a lot of people would just look at that uh, and be like, all right, this is just nonsense content that I'm not interested in. However, the point of covering that topic was the fact that this could be an omen for things to come. And I am very happy that a lot of you guys seem incredibly, you know, intelligent, realizing that, hey, yeah, while I don't care about this various discovery content, how this will affect digital media going forward, that is very much applicable to you and I. And I'm happy that everybody seemed to kind of get that. There were a few comments I saw that everybody was like, nobody cares about this discovery content. And, you know, that's not entirely true. I'm sure there are people that bought it um, that are upset that their content's being pulled, the content that they paid for. But again, it's an omen for things to come and what could potentially happen in the future, uh, especially if, you know, there aren't some checks and balances that are put into how they could just pull stuff like that um, you know, outright, with very little warning as well. But outside of that, also, uh, yesterday, there were a bunch of users that had reported bans on the PlayStation Network. It looks like that situation has been remedied, but I do quickly want to talk about that. Harkening back to the digital media talk, the disc version of Avatar Frontiers of Pandora needs an online connection to install. You can't start the game until you connect online, so that's very upsetting for those of you that were like, I'm just gonna buy physical media all the time. Well, if this is introduced as well, that's something to be mindful of. And update 2.1, the major free update for Cyberpunk 2077 is rolling out. Want to briefly mention that at the end of this video. But do want to note, over at The Verge, it was noted many PlayStation Network users reported Monday that their accounts were unexpectedly permanently suspended. As of Tuesday morning, many of the people who had received messages now say their accounts have been restored. Uh, some of them contacted customer service while others did not, but nearly a day after the issues began, uh, it looks like it has been remedied. But Sony hasn't commented publicly or responded to The Verge about the wave of bans or the restorations that follow. A message to one user read, this account is permanently suspended from the PlayStation Network due to violations of the PlayStation Network terms of service and user agreements. I believe some people had reached out to uh, customer service and uh, they did say that they were looking into the issue. So I'm sure that Sony was made aware of the issue right away. It would have been nice to get a direct statement out right away. No network or account problems were listed on Sony's important notices, PlayStation support page, but again, at least it has been remedied. But you definitely, uh, from a Sony standpoint, they definitely should have made a statement right out the gate if this many reported incidents were happening, especially for permanent bans. That's like pretty insane. So not a good look at all by Sony as far as that's concerned, but at the very least, things did get remedied and it wasn't a complete tornado situation where people were being banned unjustifiably or for nonsense reasons. Um, because I I've, I've dealt with PlayStation customer support before and like, yo, it's just customer support people, but they're not gonna know a lot of what's going on in terms of PlayStation Network being down and just offering the relevant help all the time. And I'm sure that people reached out to customer service, didn't get help, and got incredibly tilted, especially if your account is attached to, you know, uh, thousands of dollars of purchases. But then, uh, again, that's another thing where it's like, yo, people are uh, getting stealth banned and uh, perma banned, and obviously it's been restored, but that's also a cause for concern. Can you imagine if you were one of those people that were like, man, digital media just getting pulled? That That's very scary in terms of all of the content that I bought on my PlayStation account and suddenly this PlayStation account, you, you go online and that's banned as well and you just lose access to everything. It's just like, man, that ha happening back to back, I could definitely see cause some worry. But, um, you know, for now, I don't think anybody is going to get unjustifiably banned, but hopefully uh, Sony puts a squash on that ever happening again. Moving on from that, a big thing that people want to do going forward is buy disc-based games of all of the titles that they're looking forward to. Well, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is one of the biggest games of December, probably the biggest game of December. Oh, and guess what? The disc version of Avatar Frontiers of Pandora needs an online connection to install. You can't launch the game until you connect online so you can install the entirety of the game. Reddit user Interesting Squash 81 received their physical PS5 copy of the game early, but when they tried to play the game, they got an image simply showing the game's logo and its December 7, 2023 release date. The user then tried to change the date and time on the console and launch the game offline, but they were still shown the same image. 
It appears that the game won't continue until it's been verified online, perhaps requiring a day one patch or simply just performing an online check to see if the release date has passed. Uh, that's coming from Video Games Chronicles. I wonder if that's a way that, um, you know, publishers are going to implement uh, people from, you know, getting the game early and then leaking content online because that's a lot of the times what happens people get a disc-based copy of the game early whether it be street date being broken and then you know that that content starts circulating online and then a complete crap show starts um that would be unfortunate if this is the route they decide to go and ultimately you would hope that something's worked out after the launch date where they could just launch the game no problem this is reinforced by a small message on the front of the game's final box art which reads internet required to install the game so you cannot even start the game without internet connection available uh, to install the entirety of the game, which a lot of people were like, this is why I stick to physical media, and imagine that this becomes a regular thing in terms of disc-based games as well, where to install the game, because every game needs to be installed directly to your console now, uh, you're gonna require an internet connection as well. So it just seems like we are at the mercy of the publishers uh, these days as far as that's concerned. Frontiers of Pandora does drop on December the 7th. Top edition is $130, and that's the element of the game's release that I constantly go back to like bro we're getting to a hundred and thirty dollar top tier digital editions think about that for a second I thought MK1 was crazy with a hundred and ten dollars this one's a hundred and thirty dollars it has a season pass and a bunch of in-game items but man the season pass itself is valued at 40 bucks because the standard edition is 70 bucks the um mid-tier digital upgrade which is a hundred and ten just includes the season pass and that's the second tier digital edition a hundred and ten and then the top tier is one 30 just insane to me insane like we talk about 70 dollars price tags but it's really much more than 70 dollars with most of these games when you talk about early access gimmicks being introduced season pass gimmicks i mean season pass really any gimmick it's just a standard procedure these days for most games but season pass content if you really want the entirety of these games you're spending a lot more and game prices have gone up season pass prices have gone up as well it wasn't that long ago where a season pass would be 20 25 maybe 30 dollars at most but with avatar the season pass is valued at 40 dollars and you'll get another edition on top of that for 130 uh so 60 dollars extra on top of your 70 dollars if you really want everything so that's just insane to me and you know i wish we could get breakdowns of how many people buy standard editions of games versus these deluxe and um the premium editions and whatnot but obviously it's enough where it makes it very advantageous to do this because guess what 70 dollars is covering the cost of the development of the game think about spending an additional $60. Do you think the content you're getting for that additional $60 is the amount of investment that it required creating that base game? No, it's not. Even though it's close to the price, it's not whatsoever. A lot of that content you can make the argument should be in the game right out the gate. And when you talk about the early access gimmick, I mean, that's just a way to fleece money from people. Let's not, let's not put it any other way. That's just the gimmick that they've introduced as a way to just generate additional revenue. They're not offering you anything with that. They're locking the game away from people that are paying the standard price that's what's going on there but uh you know i'm a broken record when it comes to that lastly i do want to note cyberpunk 2077 hey and this is another element that goes back to the digital talk but kind of a different thing so update 2.1 is out today we went over the entirety of the update it's huge as far as the patch notes go a lot of new features uh, some of the most requested features such as the metro radio port repeatable car races hangouts with romantic interest ca uh, cats and much more a lot of gameplay refinements as well uh, ultimate edition also came out remember on xbox it is all on disc base game phantom liberty all on disc playstation unfortunately the content is split up where uh the base game is on disc and then the uh phantom liberty expansion is unfortunately a voucher code that you do have to redeem on the playstation store so you know if for all of you looking for physical content uh that is one of the downsides to the ultimate edition at least on playstation so a bit of a bummer there but uh still i've talked highly about cyberpunk 2077 and the game has gotten remarkably better over the last three years and nice to see the ultimate edition now out but that is gonna do it for me again Another wave of unfortunate PlayStation news. At least the idea of the band accounts, that has been restored and people have gotten their accounts back. But Avatar Frontiers and Pandora, a workaround there, uh, I guess to stop people from leaking information online. I don't know what the reasoning is, but... 
the disc version of the game does require an online connection to install and cyberpunk 2077 update 2.1 the free update out now ultimate edition out now uh just the one downside on playstation 5 for a digital voucher code for phantom liberty but that'll do it for me sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.